and pinilin ko ba kaman lang nato. In the words of my father, or as most of the Marshall Islands know him, Papa, the ocean is made up of drops. Each one of us is responsible for a drop of ocean. If you take care of the drop, your drop, he takes care of his drop, and she takes care of her drop. We can all take care of the world safely. It has been a hard couple of months since Baba passed away. To say that he meant the world to us, my mother, my sisters, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, cousins, and other extended family. And of course his fellow countrymen, the people of the Marshall Islands would be an understatement. Since his passing, there has been an outpouring of beautiful articles, reporters pinning lovely testimonials about his legacy, personal messages from friends, even strangers sharing their memories about him. All these people stretch, stretching their condolences across vast distances to reach me, my family, my country, at first, this global outpouring of affection was a little unnerving. After all, mourning is so personal and so private. Yet Baba's passing was the complete opposite of that. It was intensely public. A flare shot up and seen all over the world. Only later, as we moved through our grief together as family, would we realize that our loss was not ours alone. That he, he was not ours alone. But what we would have, have, would have to share him in death as we had shared him in life. Those of us who had the chance to know him, to really know him, know this. To love him is to share him. As one shares the sunlight. Baba's accomplishments were enough for 10 lifetimes. He led our country to, to independence, fought for redress for the unresolved harms of nuclear testing, and justice in our struggle against the rising tides of climate change, which threaten not only the livelihoods of our people, but also our country's very existence. As a fellow government employee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I had the privilege to join him on many of his trips, where I witnessed his speeches on the floor of the United Nations, joined him in negotiations with high-level officials. I would take photographs and video and send them back home. And at night, we would Skype with my daughters, his granddaughters, recount the day and talk about our presence, the, their presence that we'd bring back home. I know that Papa's many accomplishments are documented and that his legacy will live on for years to come. It is impossible not to speak of his tenacity and passion for social justice. This award acknowledges his accomplishments, his lifetime of service not only to his own people, but to the people of the world. But to me, this award means much more than that because it's also about awarding a person who patterns his or her life around the beautiful belief that what we love, we can save. That the world can be saved by ordinary people with extraordinary resolve. That we are the ones we have been waiting for that we are enough. Baba was a leader among men, not merely because he gave everything he had to improve upon the world, to leave it better than he had found it, which is what all good men seek to do, but rather because he believed in the power of ordinary people, and because he believed that each and every one of us is called to and qualified to save the world. And he put his belief into practice every day in the way he interacted with others in the spirit of supreme generosity and treated those around him with dignity. Over the years, I have observed Baba in almost every conceivable scenario, from high-level meetings with world leaders to village-level community meetings on remote islands. His demeanor was always the same his attentiveness never wavering. No matter your station in life, in Baba's eyes, you were worth talking to, learning from. In my mind, 
that was part of a, part of Baba's magic. He assigned such great value to everyone he came across. To him, everyone was urgently, significantly important. You see, everyone is a steward of his own drop of ocean, and every drop matters. Even when he was offered positions that would take him abroad, away from home and family, he turned them down. Time and time again, he rejected offers from all over the world. He simply couldn't fathom being far from his seat by the lagoon outside our home where he hugged his daughters, teased his grandchildren, welcomed family and friends and strangers to sit down, drink sakal, and share their stories as he shared his. The future of Pablo say is our responsibility, but eventually we know we will pass it on to our children in whatever form we leave it. He took this responsibility to his core and instilled it in his family, his community, and his country. This obligation to the future inspired youth the world over. But in the Marshall Islands, Baba had a special place, special devotion to mentoring the youth, the youth who followed him. In one of his last interviews, he was asked what inspires him. His response, it's getting the youth to take it on their, as their own cause and not looking at it as an article that is debated in politics and international meetings, but as something that is really much more real than that. It is a cause that needs to be not only understood, but take that understanding and you pass it on. And who better to do it than them, than our youth? Even while he held positions in government and on the world stage, he took time to work with our youth. He could often be found in classrooms with students in his office, at our home, mentoring the future generation. In Paris, he brought a team of students and young climate warriors with him to negotiate, to meet world leaders, and to bring human faces to the debate. He said time and time again that it, it was not him or his government that made the biggest impact in that forum, but rather it was that group of youth who ran around the negotiations, sharing with others their plight, their worries, their fears, and their hopes. The youth that were his greatest inspiration have answered his call. Papa still leads an army, an army of climate warriors, both within, the, within and beyond the Marshall Islands. He still provides the tools to continue the battle. He is still with us and we can all feel it. He continues to encourage us to remind us of the legitimacy of our cause even when the politics of the world work against us. He continues to encourage and inspire, to mentor and empower. Everything we do now is for Papa. What better motivation could there be? During an interview with the Washington Post, my father was quoted as saying, we're suffering the result of climate change and of the nuclear legacy. And we have had nothing to do with it either. In either cases, people have to choose to end the world, this universe. You can either do it slowly with climate change, or you can press a button and blow it up, and neither is justified. His words even now ring true. They cut deep down to the bone. But what I wish to print out, point out sorry, in his emphasis is choice. It is choice that brought Papa to the front lines. Even as his body began to betray him, even when the doctors warned him against trips abroad, it is choice that brought him home as well that made sure he never missed a family event, a birthday party, even when he was exhausted. In fact, only a few months ago, while he was fighting the cancer that would eventually take him from us, he was notified of this award. Determined to make it here himself to accept it, he told us all he would be coming to Germany in October. This award meant so much to him. He was always proud of his personal friendships and even prouder of the partnership between the governments of, the, of Germany and the Marshall Islands. Particularly as part of the High Ambition Coalition with Minister Barbara Hendricks. Germany has walked hand in hand with Baba. In fact, we have held hands literally 
as we, our two countries, walked in on the final day of the negotiations of the Paris Agreement and announced our success. My father did not believe in extraordinary people. Only ordinary people with extraordinary resolve. He would not consider himself extraordinary. He was simply a man who made a choice to struggle fiercely for justice, climate, and otherwise, and recommitted to that choice over and over and over. Out of love of the world and faith in the power of each person to take responsibility for their own drop of ocean. I leave you with this message from Papa. Most of us, most of what we do tends to die after us. This issue of climate change and the nuclear issue in the islands is much too important for us to allow it to be within the realm of one or two th or three single politicians or political groups. It must transcend us. It must be something that continues and something that people will be happy to carry moving forward. I invite us all to make a choice. Let each person here tonight choose to take care of his or her own drop of ocean. For ordinary people, working in concert is the only thing that has ever changed the world. I can think of no better way to honor Baba than to tend to my drop and trust that you will all tend to yours. In the end, I know we can save the world. On behalf of my late Baba Tony de Broom, I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.